Last spring I started thinking about building a 3D printer and started digging into the uh, what was going on and found that there was a lot of activity but as I looked deeper into the cost of what it would probably cost me given what I had here locally maybe a better way to expend that time and energy and, and money uh, would be toward a bench top type CMC machine that was more oriented toward uh, carving in wood or milling in wood and, and maybe some light metal like aluminum. So while there's a ton of material out there on the internet, as you read it, it all seems to be in the middle. Uh, and it's kind of hard to figure out how to get started. Here's how I approached it uh, with minimal skills. Um, but because I wanted to build a something that would put some forces on the cutter head it needed to be fairly rigid and of course any kind of machine like this needed needs to be well aligned so a combination of rigidity and alignment drove me in of the decision process is about what kind of materials i picked to work with and how i put them together when I first started looking at it, of course, everybody wants to have a machine as big as a garage and put a, a refrigerator under it and, and mill. But the reality is we all have a limited space to work with. And what I scaled my requirements back to was having something that was probably about the size of a sheet of notebook paper, eight and a half by 11 working space, X and Y direction and a clearance of maybe five to six inches with the actual travel of the milling bit three to, to five inches and when you look at a milling bit they're only a couple of three inches in length most of them so your practical travel is set by the length of the of the bit so with that in mind i then thought about what am i going to make this thing out of some research showed that a lot of folks were having success using 80-20 material and that seemed to uh, fit well with my skills. Stuff gets expensive though if you build a complete machine out of 80-20. Uh, what I ended up doing was uh, buying some 1x3 stock 4 foot links and um, was able to build the entire machine using kind of a hybrid technique of 80-20 where that would uh, provide rigidity and where I could uh, use large, peach, large pieces uh, use 5 8 MDF. So that's what you're seeing here. I first sat down with a piece of paper and tried to sketch it out and quickly realized that probably you, it's kind of a chicken or the egg syndrome. You almost need to see the whole thing, decide how long any piece of needs the, to be. So I came across uh, an application by Autodesk, 123 Design, that's a, a good CAD modeling program, mostly primarily targeted toward uh, the 3D printing world. But for something like this, given that it's free, makes a good vehicle. One of the first decisions I was confronted with was uh, what kind of stepper motors did I want to drive this device with. And looking at YouTube, it looked like uh, a lot of folks were having success with a NEMA 23 stepper motors. So <laughs> that was my way of analyzing the problem. Um, the other thing that I uh, decided fairly early on in the project was whether to make my own guides and bearings or to buy something that was uh, pre-built. And here again, I took the easy way out. I chose 20 millimeter and 16 millimeter rails to build the machine. The 20 millimeter ones are down here and the 16 millimeter ones are here. And then I uh, used uh, the Chinese ball screws and anti-backlash nuts to the mating bearings. Um, so armed with those pieces like from eBay plus this CAD program, I was able to model the individual subcomponents in the CAD program, piece them all together, 
and then start uh, using some approximate dimensions to uh, for the MDF and look for interferences between the parts. That was one of the big uh, pluses about using a CAD program to model in is that you can rotate and I'll try to demonstrate a little bit um, what I'm talking about. Now we'll rotate it here. It goes. So you might be able to tell I just about pushed the limits of what uh, 1 through 2 3D can do uh, with a project as complex as what is shown here. The uh, thing I'm to notice here is how I use the 80-20 1x3s. Placing them this way maximize the rigidity of the unit and um, placing the rails at right angles to the way this these pieces are laying further improve the rigidity of the of the system and at the same time makes for an e a relatively simple build all your building or cutting or right angle cuts what's not shown in this view are the angle brackets uh, the 80 20 angle brackets that you can get um, that ties these two uh, pieces together and this piece and this piece together. I actually didn't use those brackets back here. There's not a whole lot of stress placed on this bearing here. Uh, it's just along for the ride. Most of the stress takes place as this uh, anti-backlash nut is pushed or pulled back and forth along uh, the track. Also you can see I'm not showing in this view the the um, cross member that uh, bridges that, uh, that space and ties these two uh, pieces together. That was a relatively simple piece to figure out what it was going to look like and determine whether I had an interference so I didn't bother to include it in the in the, in the model. That probably covers the key features of the Y-axis drive system. I'm going to flip it over and we'll go back up to the top. A couple of other things I'd like to talk about. Okay, uh, got it flipped over. Uh, because the unit is fairly a benchtop machine, it's fairly compact. That made for um, a small Z carriage, uh, or at least I didn't want to build a, a large one. So toward that end, you can find on eBay relatively cheap, complete units, used units, which I found one for uh, $150. And talking about dollar costs, uh, these things are not cheap. All up costs for this machine came in around fifteen hundred dollars. Things like the uh, the eighty twenty was eighty four dollars, uh, one hundred and fifty dollars for electronics, hundred dollars for the software to run the machine with. Uh, not uh, not shown on this uh, uh, unit, but included in the cost I'm quoting is a four hundred watt uh, spindle and a matching 48-volt uh, power supply to go with that. So, um, and it's, I'm not including what you might have for bits, uh, router bits and so forth. But another thing you're going to do that surprised me is you're going to spend a lot of money or a lot of time finding screws. Uh, there are all different kinds of screws that uh, go into the assembly of this thing, and I never seem to have the right type as I move from one area to another. Four millimeter, six millimeter, uh, three millimeter. Uh, many of the screws are metric. And then uh, the 80-20, most of the mounting there was done with quarter 20 type screws. And a few drywall type screws to uh, attach some of the MDF together. So that covers I think, most of the design elements. Here's how the CAD program mod rendered the model from the side. And now I'll show you how it looks from the back. For And this is the back view here. Um, as you can see, I didn't completely 
uh, detail everything in the machine, but uh, mostly what I was looking for as I was working up this model is uh, things like where these holes needed to be located, the exact distances. And another thing to point out about project build was converting these uh, 1T3 STL files into a, a full-size uh, print. That was kind of a complicated process. Uh, Maybe others who found a, a quicker way to do that. But basically, I found a program that would convert the, the STL drawings to DXF files and then using a paint or some other program to scale to the screw scale that I needed.